So you might have recently heard of a movie called Black Klansman. Directed by Spike Lee and starring Denzel Washington's son, Kylo Ren, and Venom, this movie tells the story of real-life Ron Stallworth, who was the first black cop in Colorado Springs, and his investigation slash infiltration of the Ku Klux Klan. As you might already assume, this movie is absolutely hilarious because of the concept of an African-American man trying to join the KKK. Well, since you asked, I hate blacks. I hate Jews, Mexicans, and Irish. However, after recently seeing this in theaters, I was genuinely surprised to find just how deep this movie delves into politics and race issues. Now, I want to preface this video by saying that, regardless of your politics, or my politics, or whether or not we agree with the political message being made by this film, this movie is somewhat brilliant with its presentation of said message, and this video is simply meant to analyze why it's so effective, and there's two main aspects that I'll be looking at, and I'll switch back and forth between them. Warning, some spoilers ahead. Number one, the allegories, and number two, the balancing of the comedy and seriousness. So let's start with number one, which in my opinion is probably the most important one. For those of you who don't know, an allegory is essentially a symbol that is meant to represent something deeper. A prime example of this with movies would be the Narnia series, where the lion is supposed to represent Jesus Christ since he dies in order to protect his people and is later resurrected. The main allegory present in Black Klansman is probably one that is most obvious if you've seen the film. David Duke representing Donald Trump. If you don't believe me, there's an entire scene in the film where Ron Stallworth is told that people like David Duke have given racism a new face since he doesn't act how you would typically expect a KKK member to act since he's more reserved and calm and professional. And the fact that he's going into politics presents a potential danger since the American people might end up being swayed by his beliefs and someone like him might end up becoming president. To which Ron then responds to by saying, no one would ever vote for someone like that for president. In the movie, this is obviously played for a joke and is meant to be a jab towards Trump. However, this is an important scene because it establishes who David Duke is supposed to represent in the film and how that applies to today's politics. It's no secret that many people in America were shocked when Trump became president, as he said and did things that were seen as controversial. And many of those same people, in the aftermath of the election, started pondering how this possibly could have happened. This movie gives us an interesting answer to that question. I'll come back to this in a bit. All the KKK members in this film act differently from each other. Sure, they share the same similar core beliefs and all, but as far as their personalities go, they are vastly different. The prime example of this is with this crazy guy right here, who's extremely open about his racist and homophobic beliefs. The actor's amazing performance really elevates the feeling of hatred this guy has to people who are non-white, and compared to the calm demeanor of David Duke, one can start to see the point that is trying to be made. Today we are privileged mm -hmm. to be among white men oh, right. and white women, <laughs> <laughs> such as yourselves. Okay. <clears throat> we about done here? We got a few more items on the... Uh... Not just yet. Gotta make sure there's no Jew in it. There is a very clear difference with the intensity that these characters speak with. To a certain extent, and I don't take pleasure in saying this, David Duke seems almost more likable than this redneck guy. Don't get me wrong, they're both terrible people, but the way Duke says things... And white women, <laughs> such as yourselves. Real warriors for the real America, the America that our ancestors fought and died for. The way he appeals to his audience really makes you understand how a man like him managed to get into such a high position in the KKK. You could totally see how people who may have already been a little racist might be influenced into joining the organization because of the way Duke presents himself and his arguments. And this is the answer that the movie provides to the question I just mentioned earlier. Again, whether or not you agree with the statement being made isn't the point of this video. The fact that David Duke is metaphorically supposed to represent Trump isn't an accident. Spike Lee clearly makes parallels with how both of these figures managed to rise to power and gain widespread support despite saying things that many people would consider atrocious. Someone like this guy would never be able to gain that much support because of their extreme nature. I mean, even the other people in the KKK constantly have problems with him. But someone like this guy? It's possible. Now, on to the second point. The balancing of the comedy and the seriousness. This might not seem all that important, but it's honestly the main reason why this movie is so unique. Balancing jokes and serious moments in films is no easy task, yet here it's accomplished masterfully. Thinking back on the movie, it amazes me just how many moments in the film made my jaw drop because of the sheer intensity being shown. 
yet at the same time I can count almost the same number of scenes in the film that made me laugh. For every hilarious scene, there's a serious one, and this is super important. Many movies nowadays seem to fail to replicate how real life actually is. They're either too serious or too lighthearted, and that can be a problem. If you want to make your movie super deep and thought provoking, you might end up losing the casual audiences. But at the same time, if you decide to make your movie too lighthearted, you'll make it more accessible to others, but you'll end up losing the ability to tell a really interesting and thought provoking story. Let me give you some examples of what I mean. Let's look at the Marvel movies. If you decide to watch films like Ant-Man, Guardians of the Galaxy, and Doctor Strange, you'll find that they're really funny and that you had a good time watching them, but they don't really have much to say in the large scheme of things. They don't have anything new to add to filmmaking, they don't have any deep profound themes, they're just fun, well-written, well-acted movies. On the other hand, you have films like Batman v Superman that are very dark and enveloped in serious characters and themes. Now, that movie has many issues, but one of the main ones in my opinion is the fact that the entire film is too dreary, and no one wants to constantly be seeing this much darkness in a superhero film. Now, let's look at a film like Black Panther. This is without a doubt a fantastic film, and one of the most financially successful films in the entire MCU, and it is my strong belief that the main reason for this is that it has a good balance of humor and seriousness. The villain of the film isn't some comically evil businessman or dictator or demon, it's a normal human being with a traumatic past that has caused him to become angry at the world around him. He isn't the most morally ambiguous villain of all time, but one of the reasons why Black Panther works so well is the fact that it balances a lot of jokes and lighthearted moments with serious themes and dialogue that pulls at your heartstrings. And this is why I'm bringing this second point as a reason for why Black Klansman's handling of political themes is so genius. Like I mentioned before, for every joke in the film, there's a scene that is very serious, and this doesn't feel artificial in any way. The comedy doesn't force itself into every scene, it's a natural reaction to a very ironically hilarious situation. But when the time comes for the officers to get to their job and to infiltrate the organization, things get serious. Very serious. I specifically recall a scene in the film where this guy and his wife are lying in bed together, and she happily comments on how she's dreamed of killing black people her whole life. Except, you know, she uses the n-word instead. This was one of those moments where my jaw dropped. The juxtaposition of how happy she looked versus the terrible thing she was saying was mind-blowing. I love that scene because, in a way, it shows the perspective of these people. What they're saying is absolutely terrible, and they're terrible for saying it, but the fact that they say it so normally, as if it was a normal conversation, really drives the point home that these racist people, and racist people in general, are people. They aren't just some evil demonic beings that exist somewhere in the south, they're real people who get up every day to fight for the things they believe in, and getting rid of racism will never be as simple as deciding to arm yourself to go to war against anyone who opposes you, like brother Kwame suggests to Ron in the film, but rather attempting to peacefully persuade them that their beliefs of hatred are wrong, and ultimately hurt society rather than help it. These two extremely opposing sides that decide to constantly be at war with each other will never solve anything. And coming back to my point about allegories, we can see the same thing today. With Donald Trump being represented by David Duke, Black Lives Matter being represented by this organization in the film that has good intentions, yet shows hints of extremism as shown by Brother Kwame, and the KKK representing, well, the KKK, and perhaps even Trump supporters in modern day America. All these things are done on the film on purpose, to send a message that great political figures such as MLK and Nelson Mandela tried to preach so long ago. A message that seems to have been forgotten by many people today. In a society filled with so much hatred and so many divisions, Democrats versus Republicans, Liberals versus Conservatives, Black Lives Matter versus the KKK, the real solution and the real harbinger of peace will always be the man in the middle. The man who stays away from extremes, who tries to find relatively peaceful solutions, who works with the system to take down the unjust aspects of the system rather than trying to tear it all down. And in today's world, with today's complicated politics, that's a lesson everyone needs to learn. That is the genius behind Black Klansmen.